Hello, this is Gordon Henderson and today I'm doing a little video um, to try and show some of the differences between BBC Basic and Commodore 64 Basic. Uh, this is a result of a conversation recently on the Commander X64 Facebook group and uh, I said I'd do a little video, so here I am. Now I don't have a Commodore 64 and I don't have in front of my BBC Micro either, but what I do have is my little Ruby 6502 system, uh, which is the little red board at the side. That's a 6522VIA, there's a 65CO2, there's 64K RAM, there's a 80 Mega, which controls our filing system on SD card, our serial port, and one or two other little bits and pieces. The uh, IO chip, we've got eight LEDs there, which we can have a look at later on. Um, this here is a serial terminal which is running on my Linux desktop. It's uh, It could be Minicom, it could be any other sort of serial terminal type program. And I've got a little stopwatch above it because I'm just going to do a few little timings. So the first thing I thought I'd do is I'll, I'll load up a, a little demonstration and I'll set it running and then I'll, I'll, I'll chat over it. So I'm going to run I'm going to run EH Basic. Now EH Basic isn't Commodore Basic 2, but it is a Microsoft style Basic. It's very similar to it um, on the surface anyway. If I load in the Mandelbrot program, the that just reads it in as a text file as if I typed it here. I'm going to send out a poke command. Seven not four seven F comma one. Now that disables control C and control C detection will slow things down a bit, so this will make it a little bit faster. Uh, so if I go to the uh, stopwatch, start the stopwatch, press the run button. Now EH Basic is a Microsoft derived basic as far as I can tell. It uses four byte floating point format, so it should be slightly quicker than Commodore C. 64 basic because that uses five byte floating points that's the uh, microsoft basic version 2. Uh, bbc basic also uses five byte floating point um, numbers but it is considerably faster than microsoft basic why probably because it was written five years later and so in five years you can learn a lot you can change a lot you can adapt and make things better. The other reason may be that BBC Basic is a 16K ROM and the Microsoft Basic, EH Basic, is about 10K, it's just under 10K. Uh, AppleSoft Basic, which is also a Microsoft derived Basic, is just over 10K and it uses 5 byte floating points but it also has graphics. So we're coming up to the end here, I'm just gonna Get ready to stop the stopwatch and we'll see what we uh, come up with. Any minute now. Yep, there we go. So 1 minute 19, that is what I expected. That's what I've seen it do in the past. Um, there's our basic program. So this is EH Basic, a Microsoft style basic. I'm now going to switch into BBC Basic. We're now running BBC Basic version 4 and I will do exactly the same. I'll, I'll bring exactly the same program in as if I had typed it at the keyboard. Yep, there we go. And there's the program. Uh, it does, it will time itself. The, the, the zero that was printed earlier comes from this, uh, this thing here. Now the time pseudo variable in BBC Basic is incremented 100 times a second and uh, so that will actually allow us to, to time it itself. So if I just run it now, what we'll find is that BBC Basic is considerably quicker. In fact, it's almost twice as quick on the same hardware. And just in case anybody wants to type this in or download it and run it on their Commodore 64 or any other retro style computer, my 6502 here is running at 16 megahertz. If you try and run this on a one megahertz Apple, for example, you're going to be waiting 20 minutes. So just be warned. <laughs> it might be nice to watch it come out, but it's going to take 
a little bit longer than it's taking here. Anyway, here we go. Yep, so 48 seconds. That's so the previously we were at 79 seconds and now we're at 48 seconds. We're not quite twice as fast, but we are a little bit fast. And it is exactly the same program. We could make it faster, but th there's there's no point here. It's just a demonstration. Where is the, the speed ups? The speed ups is the floating point numbers. Floating point numbers in this version of BASIC is very much faster than floating point numbers in any version of Microsoft BASIC. So that's that's one difference. One difference is that it's faster. There's there's many, many other differences um, too. But I thought I would have a, a quick look at uh, a few other things. So I've got a program here, um, Colors. Uh, simple text colors. On your Commodore 64 you would print characters to the screen to change the text color and actually BBC Basic is no no difference from that at all. If I load up um, if I bring in color.text you'll see there that line let me just uh, let's do seven there's a an option that BBC Basics got is it gives you sort of semi pretty printed thing. CHR dollar seventeen, CHR dollar I. Character seventeen is the command in BBC Basic or, or on a BBC Micro rather to change the text color. And we've got colors. This this particular graphics terminal is going to give us sixteen different colors at the moment. The thing about BBC Basic, if I now load a program that's a BBC program, you'll see there's actually a colour statement. So one of the things you can do when you've got a little bit more code space, 16k versus 12k for example, you can have more keywords. So that program does exactly the same thing and all that colour I is doing is it's outputting character 15 plus the, uh, the relevant uh, colour number. Go on EH Basic. There's the same program, and it does the same thing because the the colours have not been interpreted by Basic. Basic is just sending the the codes through to give us, uh, and it's up to the operating system to to then interpret the colours. Which in the Commodore sixty four would be the kernel, in the Acorn BBC Micro it's the the MOS, the machine operating system. I'll just uh, give you an example or two what we can uh, do with this. Um, move zero zero. We can draw lines, and this is actually going over a serial line. So there's there's no there's no graphics memory. We can't poke the graphics memory memory here. It's purely going over a uh, a serial line, and whilst having an extra 4k or whatever is great you can add more keywords sometimes you stick with generic keywords so the plot is probably one of the most confusing of the generic keywords in bbc basic um, because it, it it covers a multitude of sins so let me just work out a suitable number for this 300 i'll give us yeah there we go so plot 85 means draw a filled triangle and that was a simple set of um, command sent over the serial line in our case to the terminal program which picked it up and did what we needed to do it drew the tri drew the triangle and this would be the same on a BBC micro the, the basic doesn't know how to draw triangles but you can type a plot command in and it goes up to in the operating system then knows how to draw the triangles and draws the triangles for you and this was extended in later versions of basic to circles rectangles filled polygons you name it, it was there basically, and even sprites. So you could actually use this to control a sprite, put a sprite on the screen with it, just a simple plot code and give it an XY coordinate and off it would go. So what else have we got? There's a um, peaks and pokes. The BBC Micro, you, you, you were sort of, you weren't, discouraged from peeking and poking but you it wasn't kind of encouraged either you, you certainly could do it if i if i go back to b 
basic. That's uh, low dh basic. That star slash command says run run a binary file off the filing system. So it, it loads it into um, memory. And if I have a look at there we go. Let me just um, clear the screen. This is Larson Scanner. Um, you might know it as the Cylon Scanner, the Knight Rider lights. This is written in EHBasic. Now EHBasic allows hexadecimal numbers using the dollar symbol there. So S is the address of the VIA here. FE10 is the memory location that the output port is mapped to. And this is a simple, it's going to do it 10 times restore, read these values, these are again the hex 0137E1C, if, if, if you can translate those into binary in your head you can see the pattern and back down again, poke, there's your poke command, poke s comma v, there's a little delay there for a t equals 100, next t, it go to 140, so I run that and if you look over at the LEDs, yeah there you go, there's our there's a little Knight Rider Cylon Larson scanner running. The early 8 bit 6502 computers, they were all memory mapped video. So you could poke the video memory, you, you could poke things into the video memory. You could do it in BBC Micro, you were sort of discouraged from doing it because the op that was the job of the operating system. And if you wanted your program to run in the tube, which was a separate uh, 6502 second processor, you didn't have video memory. The only way you could put stuff on the screen was to use the VDU commands, the, the plot commands, and so on. It, it, you just did not have direct video memory. And that's the same here. I'll just go into BBC Basic and I will load the Larson program. The list of seven and list. The BBC Basic slightly different. Now I'm going to use an integer variable here. The percent is an integer variable. Uh, ampersand. BBC Basic uses ampersand for hex numbers, which is a little bit different from your standard MOS technology where we use dollars. But uh, there you go. It's almost the same. Apart from when we come down to the poke command, poke command is question mark. So question mark s percent equals v percent, and it's called byte indirection. So question mark will store a byte. Um, exclamation mark will store a whole word and the integer words in BBC Basic are four bytes. So BBC Basic has got four byte integers. All the other uh, Microsoft style basics has got two byte integers. And the other thing we've got here is a, a little repeat loop. So repeat uh, time equals zero. This is our pseudo variable that gets incremented a hundred times a second. Repeat, do nothing until time is greater than 10. So this is gonna wait a tenth of a second between each one. In fact, let's make it a little bit a little bit faster, otherwise we'll be here all day. So if I run that, yeah, you can see that the uh, the scanner's going a little bit slower. We're not just using a random software timing loop, we're actually using a, a timer in there. So we're taking uh, five hundredths of a second between each uh, each update as it goes backwards and forwards. And there you go. So finally, I'll just show you another feature of BBC Basic. Um, load up EH Basic again. Okay, we can forget those little error messages. So this is a simple subroutine: string s dollar equals my name. Go sub two hundred. Two hundred reverses a string. Uh, nothing special here, t dollar equals empty. For one to length, pick out the, basically the character, which is the, we're picking characters out backwards from right to left, adding them into t dollar. End of the routine, we print t dollar. It's not spectacularly amazing. It was just to demonstrate a subroutine, go sub, do something with strings and return. And there's a reversed string there. If I load up something in, the, I won't say the equivalent program, it's just different. 
So BBC Basic allows named functions and named procedures. So I've got a named function here that returns a string. So fn underscore the underscore is actually part of the function name. Uh, a lot of people would start the function names with lowercase letters, which is allowed. I always started them with an underscore because it looks like a space. Uh, BBC Basic actually gives you a syntax error if you don't put, put if you put a space there. So that's just a one of those little annoyances. So function reverse. If line is, is one, then equals the you have the string that you've given it. Otherwise. Now this is a recursive function, so not only have we got named functions, we've got recursive functions. And if we wanted to, we can even have local variables which follow through recursion if you're using recursion. So this is a, a little recursive function to reverse a string. A reverse string is the last character of the string, which is that, followed by the rest of the string reversed. And there you go. So we've reversed the string using recursion in BASIC, in BBC BASIC. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's all the, the little demos that I've um, done here. Yep. What about there? Um, comments, questions, leave in the comments below. I'll leave the comments open in the um, YouTube page. Um, but feel free to ask anything. There you go. Thanks very much.